are you, John? Hey, Javier. Uh, good to be here. Nice I'm good. to see you. I'm here with John, a product planner for a, a new Hyundai Sonata plug-in hybrid. So a new addition to the lineup, huh? Yes, exactly. So in addition to the hybrid that we previously had, you not only have an all-new hybrid, we have an all-new plug-in hybrid as well. So the plug-in hybrid, when did that, that it, this one came into the market? Oh, it's not out on the market yet? No, the hybrid, I'm sorry. Oh, the hybrid first came into the market uh, as a 2011 model year. Okay, back like in four years already, yeah. Yes. So let's go ahead and drive a little bit and we talk about uh, the amazing technology in this car. So <laughs> plug-in hybrid. Obviously the engine is on, so we don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, so it's the electric motor, so uh, we got we got some charge on this vehicle. So currently, it has an all-electric range of 24 miles, but that's on a full charge, and this is on a full charge right now. Okay. So it'll be in electric mode for pretty much your entire so, driver. And, and that, that depends on the speed, or we can go just electric mode uh, at, at whatever speed? Great question. It depends on not the speed, but the engine demand. So oh, for example, okay. depending on how much accelerator uh, you're pressing, it's a blended system. It tries to stay in EV as much as possible, but let's say you have to accelerate real quickly. The gasoline engine does kick in and provide traction power as well. So we can, let's say, like for a regular commute, like you were in, in Miami, in New York, in LA, where there's a lot of traffic, and mm -hmm. we're not gonna go really go that fast. Mm -hmm. It's possible if we have a commute at less than 24 miles that we go electric the whole time. You go electric the whole time. You don't use an ounce of gasoline. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Tell us a little bit more about the, the other uh, technical aspects of, the, of this vehicle, engine and all that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I think the easiest way to think about it is a plug-in hybrid is like a hybrid and an electric vehicle combined in one. It's the best of both worlds. So, for example, with an electric vehicle, you always have to charge, you're always worried about your range. Yeah. Um, on a plug-in hybrid, once you plug in, you get a certain range on this car, 24 miles of electric range. And once that, once that dwindles down, it operates just like a regular hybrid car. So the okay. total range is up, up to 605 miles. Wow. So the easiest way to think about it is, it's the best of both worlds, but it's the hybrid, it's essentially a hybrid car that has a much larger battery system. Okay. So this is about five times larger, the battery system on the plug-in than the hybrid. Okay, speaking about the, the size of the battery, some of the cars in this segment, mm -hmm. there's like the Accord, there's the Fusion yes. from Ford. Those batteries take out a lot of space, especially in the trunk or on the seats. Mm -hmm. This is not the case here. You were like really good with engineering in that. Yeah, you know, the interior packaging, uh, uh, what we did was we applied the battery system in the subfloor at a cargo area. And there, uh, on the plug-in hybrid, because it's a 9.8 kilowatt hour battery system, which is rather large, there is some intrusion into the trunk area, but it's relatively minor and it's got a very functional cargo area. And what about the gas tank? I mean, gas tanks are like shaped in very weird mm -hmm. <laughs> ways nowadays. Uh -huh. The other day I saw one car upside down and it's really incredible how you take advantage of very, very little corner and crank in, yeah. the, in the other end of the car. So that's the case here too? Yeah, I mean, obviously what we're trying to do is optimize aerodynamics of the vehicle. And that's what you see a lot of times. You want as clean and on the floor as possible to help minimize air drag. And uh, with the gas tank on the plug-in hybrid, it's at 14.53 gallons, yeah. which is a little bit smaller than just a regular hybrid that comes in at 15.85 gallons. But you get the addition of the plug-in hybrid, so exactly. that's like a good combination. Exactly. So speaking of the battery and the density of the battery, the technology aspect of the battery, that also has not only advantages for the performance, but also for the actual eventual price of the car, right? Because you take like tax, in tax incentives based on that. That's a great question and that's a great comment actually because you're exactly right. Uh, tax credit provided by the IRS, provided by the federal government, is dependent on the battery system size. Uh, so for example, ours is a 9.8 kilowatt system versus some competitor 7.6 kilowatt system. So our tax credit calculated out is $4,900. So that gives you an advantage in terms of, uh, of the other competitors, right? In this exactly. segment, the Accord, I think, is like it has a, a less, less... Yeah, Accord uh, has a slightly smaller uh, kilowatt hour uh, uh, battery system. But more than anything else, it's a great combination of not only do you get more tax credit, you also get more all electric range because you are you yeah, do have you get more more system. more energy stored mm -hmm. in the in the battery, mm -hmm. and aside for that, uh, the car is exactly the same, right, uh, from the regular Sonata. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say for, for the, the powertrain, powertrain, except for the powertrain, the big differences are that you see in the exterior. So it's got a very purposeful aerodynamic design. Oh, okay. So the whole front fascia and the rear fascia are 
completely different than the than the gasoline standard model. So you get a much deeper grille. The headlights shape and the graphics are completely different along with the rear bumper. It's, it's a more aero bumper to reduce turbulence. So that's form and function. Everything is for a purpose, right? Exactly, exactly. It wasn't just for just for change's sake. It was, yeah. like you said, it was for uh, function as well. So uh, this car, let's talk about the regular hybrid mm -hmm. because that car, as you said, came out in 2011. Are there any improvements in the engineering for that car for 2015? Yeah, where do I start? Uh, you, know, it's quite, <laughs> you tell me, you're the expert. <laughs> uh, it's quite a bit. I mean, overall, one of, one of the things that we want to share is efficiency is a key development priority. Just overall efficiency. So not only do you get an all-new design, all the great uh, features with the vehicle, but the major change is the fact that everything on our hybrid system architecture that we call transmission mounted electric device yeah. has been improved. So the gasoline engine goes from a 2.4 liter to a 2 liter with direct injection for more efficiency. Not only that, our uh, electric motor is now smaller but more powerful um, and lighter. Uh, and our battery system is increased by 13%, so it's a much larger battery system okay. than the outgoing model. All of this, in fact, I guess for the consumers, what they really care about is how does it translate into their real world fuel economy. Exactly where it's gonna take me and how long it's gonna to take to charge and I, exactly. how much money I can save yeah, exactly. in energy at the end, right? Yeah, so it's a 10% improvement in fuel economy over the outgoing model on the Sonata Hybrid. Uh, the fuel economy numbers, EPA rated, is uh, 40 miles per gallon wow, on the city. 40, for a big car like this. <laughs> 44 on the highway and 42 combined. So it's over a 10% improvement in fuel economy that we're able to achieve. So would it be fair to say that even though Hyundai was not the first in the market with hybrids, I mean, the wait was worth it because you're like coming with amazing technology to, with this, this segment of the car, right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. We weren't maybe a first mover uh, in the hybrid, plug-in hybrid category, but it allowed us time to develop uh, and kind of formulate our hybrid architecture to what we feel is the best represented for, for customers. And it must be really tough because uh, I guess that the main factor in developing plug-in hybrids, electric cars and all of that, it's the, the technology in the batteries, right? Mm -hmm. And that's developing kind of fast. And I think Korea is one of, the, one of the leading countries in developing that because you have LG, you have yes. Samsung, you have, I don't know what's a provider for this car, but... It's uh, actually uh, LG Chemistry, exactly. yeah. Exactly. LG Chem. And, better, and it seems better. that the, the most advanced technology is coming out of there from, from South Korea but still, it's kind of difficult to predict what's going to be in the next four or five years, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, battery technology has obviously come a very long way. Uh, on this <laughs> particular vehicle, uh, we use lithium-ion polymer, which is different than just regular lithium-ion yeah. in the fact that it's more, it's a polymer casing, so it's a more flexible uh, casing for the uh, cell, uh, for the battery system, so you could package it better on a vehicle. And that's what translates to more space in the car. Exactly. And it's also 20% lighter yeah. than the traditional lithium ion batteries. Okay, so this is the first application. I know you usually don't don't talk about future products, but I guess mm -hmm. with all the mandate from the, from the government and like <laughs> the way things are going, I mean, right now we're, we're enjoying a, a, a good time with low price gasoline. Yes, yes. But we know that that's not gonna yeah. stand forever. So. Yeah, I mean, we've been through this before, you're right. <laughs> exactly, we're gonna up and down. Uh -huh. So we can assume that in the next five, 10 years, uh, a lot of cars are gonna have some of these technologies, right? Uh, I I think, I think definitely you'll see more electrification on vehicles as we progress. Um, you talked about the, the government mandates for fuel economy, corporate, corporate average fuel economy, yeah. zero emission vehicle. All that aside, what it really does is it forces and helps the automakers to improve their fuel economy technologies. And it's a great transition period, I would say right now, where you see a lot of the hybrids coming in because yeah. a lot of the automakers do offer hybrids and some sort of electric vehicle or plug-in electric vehicle. And I think it's a very exciting time in the automotive industry because like you said, gas prices are not gonna stay <laughs> I know, and it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I've been saying this for a while now, but like the automotive industry like started like 120 years ago, something like that. And then like for pretty much for like a hundred years. It was the basics, <laughs> the basics didn't change much, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, internal yeah, combustion internal engine. Combustion, combustion engine, yeah, exactly. But now we're seeing th amazing things just in the past, what, five, ten years? Yeah. And like, who knows what we're going to expect in the next five to ten years? It's even yeah. more exciting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're right. The accelerated development of advanced powertrain technology has been quite remarkable. 
Well, uh, it's been really great to come here to Hyundai's home in the U.S. We uh -huh. were at your uh, headquarters this morning. But by the way, amazing building. Really oh yeah, nice. no, thank you very much. It's nice. It's nice working there. You know. Yeah, it must be really nice to go in there every day. I say, wow, I work here. <laughs> yeah, it's relatively new. It's only about a year old, so yeah. still very clean. <laughs> so still under guarantee. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so laughs> oh, speaking of guarantee, something really oh. important. The, a lot of people that concern about the, the, the battery life, uh -huh. uh, the guarantee I understand for this car is for life. Yeah, you know that's a that's a great point because in our research we found a lot of people are, are hesitant to purchase uh, a, a hybrid vehicle yeah. because they're afraid of what happens with my battery system. We all know we have cell phones. Batteries tend to degrade over time. I know. One of the great things about our lithium poly lithium ion polymer battery is extensive tests there's very little degradation in our battery system but if that's not enough what we do offer is the industry's exclusive lifetime hybrid battery warranty that's not just for our hybrid but for our plug-in hybrid system as well yeah. which is five times more battery cells than the hybrid and that's continuing with a tradition of a uh, Hyundai uh, guarantee like 10 years 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty is still applic uh, applicable uh, the five year 60,000 mile new vehicle warranty so we, we always pride ourselves in saying America's best warranty. And for people who still don't believe that, I mean, if you just do the math, because you've been there for uh, over 10, day, 10 years with that guarantee, right? Yes, yes. If it came you, out If you had not known yeah. that your cars were going to last that long, you would be bankrupt. So maybe <laughs> you weren't here, right? You know, it's an interesting point because uh, I wasn't with the company in 98, but I was with the company in 2008. Yeah. Interesting tidbit is uh, every time you have, you have to forecast out how much your yeah. warranty cost is going to be. After those 10 years, our warranty cost was less than two thirds of what even we wow. forecasted. So we've been even outperforming our expectations in regards to quality. So there you have it. I mean, the guarantee is there for a reason, but I mean, there's the facts that can support it. So thank you very much for your time, John. It's a really great, beautiful day here in uh, almost San Diego. We started in LA, well, in Orange County. Yes. Yeah. And we're like down here almost in San Diego. So beautiful day to drive this car. Thank you very much, Alvin. Thank you. It was great being here. Oh,